I have a theory that the payload fairing release might trigger the heat stuff. And if we keep the payload fairing on, it won't overheat. So we'll see. We're just going to launch the same thing over again. I still should have put more solar panels, but they'll probably be alright. Uh, oh, okay. I thought we had an overheat indicator, but no, there's just a glint of red there. Oh, whoa, 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 hold on there. Boop, 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 boop. Keyboard. This time I've got to be more decisive about this part. Okay, well. Let's hang on to that fairing and see what happens. Uh oh. Okay. Well, we'll point prograde. The fairing has to. I mean, of course, the fairing and nose cones will have better effect if we're pointed prograde. So let's just hold prograde. Okay, uh, hold. Anyway, well, we don't have much control here. Got a tiny little reaction wheel. Let's separate off the boosters. Okay. Don't do that. That'll make it easier to control. I mean, it makes sense, of course, that the payload fairing will protect things from heat, but it just doesn't make so much sense that there's so much heat this close to the top of the atmosphere. Actually, if the boosters had taken out the fins, that would be a net benefit because that'd be less mass that we're carrying all the way. Okay, well, we're in space. S-turns generated the uh, adjective s turny yes. That is something that does S-turns is s turny Okay, so the payload fairing theory is correct. Don't release them in the atmosphere. Is the conclusion. Okay, now we have to get, well, we have to get to orbit, but then we have to get to Moho. I should probably start burning now. <laughs> anyway. Well, I mean, if we can eventually, in a mid-course correction, shove that descending node into it, it'll be all right. Okay. I think that's a good idea. And we should just start now. But look how radial it is, though. But then again, we're high up, so we might as well go down. Two thousand is not that bad. Okay, well, just out of curiosity, I'm gonna try time warping a little bit. See, this engine works during time warp. <laughs> why, why can't the one engine that we really need to have working during time warp work during time warp? Maybe it's something to do with the electric charge depletion. This sort of view is nice. So while we're time warping, it's burning out like this. It's very sort of cinematic. Oh wait, that thing popped up. Why did that thing pop up? I was on don't show me the UI mode. Oh, okay. Wait, wait, we're going too far. Okay, I think we went too f Well, no, it would be more like this, but the bar was changing, so anyway, let's see. No, no, it's pretty good right there. Um I think we we can just correct it in the course correction. That's costing too much. That seems like something we need to correct now. Or a little bit ahead. Well, that's still costing a lot. Nope. Okay, okay, okay. 
rest will have to be something mid-course, but I'll take the 574 there. I mean, if we take a look at it, we've got 6,484. And over there, it's saying that relative speed is 3,552, which I'll assume is how much we need to capture, but might not be the case. But it's an approximation. So 5,000, sorry, 4,100. That leaves us with like 2,400 to make a mid-course correction. I think we'll be all right. So, don't know if it's better to do this burn out there, but it's it seems like mostly a radial burn. Basically, we're turning our orbit from that direction to that direction because of the mistiming of the original burn. And that's probably better further away from Kerbin. But it doesn't look like it's good to do that out in interplanetary space because then it's too late. So we don't want to be going fast with respect to Kerbin at that time, but we also don't want to be around the sun. Sort of a midway sort of deal. Okay, but we need the tiny little solar panels at the top of this. We need some recharging going on. Just keeping an eye on the electric charge. There's the moon. <laughs> It'd be funny if we smacked into Minmus right here. Wait, 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 wait. I've got the commute thing out. I've got that out. We shouldn't be outside of communication range. Of course, it didn't tell me which vessel was outside of communication range. It jerks nowadays. Every time I come out of time warp. Is it because we're that far into the save or something? Oh, we have to return those. Well, that's not going to happen. We're carrying those fins all the way to Moho. And then I'm a little bit early, but it's probably all right. Oh, Kerbin and the moon right there. Well, that relative in the speed is increasing. Crashing into it, you know how much I like seeing that. It's not sarcastic. Okay. Fine, I'll take that periapsis. We do have to get the, the mohole though, and that's that polar spot. So actually, let's, let's go polar. Well, it's not even showing me a periapsis now. I guess that'll have to be all right. I hope 5,400 will be enough to capture now. No, I'm not so sure. Okay, so out to the mid-course correction, and where's the sun? Okay, complete opposite direction. To Moho for the first time. No, we shouldn't be out of communication range. Stop it. Should be close enough. Oh, stay at the maneuver, no. Stay, stay at the maneuver. Oh gosh. There shouldn't be anything imbalanced here. I mean, the probe itself was meant to be very, very balanced. It's turning the wrong way. We got an extra reaction wheel there. It's small, but it's there. Hmm. This is peculiar. SAS has gone on an excursion. Okay, steady there, steady. Let me just see what's going on here. Okay, well that seems to be a minimum. We'll see what the situation is when we get there. Can we land on Moho? Can we land at the Moho? On Moho. Well, the first thing is we're not quite polar, so we need to fix that. Let's get as close as possible for oberthiness. That's another one of those words that I just made up. 
I don't know, does anybody else use the word Oberthiness? Seems like a good word to use. Um, it's not quite where we want. But maybe that'll rotate. It's not quite polar. So, yeah, we'll just assume. But then what's the rotational period of Moho? Could be long. Yeah, we'll figure that out once we try and land. Okay. Can you turn to that maneuver node? I don't know about our Delta V, though. This could be tight. Whoa, the sun. Okay, I'll take that. And our current orbital speed is 4,673. So now is the question. Do we have enough Delta V to actually capture on Moho? Uh, we might not have enough time like that. So let's just do the thing and make sure that we start that earlier well it's saying if we start earlier we're okay I don't know if that's great or not but on the right side the radial stuff will probably help us not hit the surface so let's see well except if we do that hmm is it being honest? I don't even know. What's, what's our burn time here? 9 minutes and 18 seconds. So, I mean, we're expecting 7 minutes of burn time. What's that CE? Capture event. I've never seen that before. Apparently there's a capture event thing. Capture event. Well, we want to get into a low orbit, that's for sure. Okay, well, let's assume that it is correct about that. Oh, oh, we're going too far. Try and get the back over there. Oh, this is straight retrograde. This is what I want to see. Even though it's far out. It's straight retrograde, that's right. It's so confusing. Why is it sometimes the right thing? But then again, I guess that's just the nature of capture burns. As opposed to already being in orbit. We are basically going in a straight line anyway. Um, retrograde, please. Come on, I know you can hold retrograde. There's definitely enough control. Here, let's just use SAS. All the fancier functions seem to mess up more. Dramatic first capture at Moho. Well, as long as the uh, PE isn't going negative or anything, and we're slowing down, I'll take it. How Moholy is the Moho, anyway? Uh, I thought it was over there. Guess it's that thing right there. Might be a bit treacherous. It actually has a capture event marker here that's like promising us, but our blue orbit is nowhere near that right now. <laughs> so that might be a problem. Hopefully we're getting there. Orbit's bending a bit. And at least our current delta V is greater than the surface velocity, that's important. We have captured. And now I just have to make sure that the periapsis doesn't get too low. Okay, well, we'll go back to periapsis and bring that down further. Oh, suddenly context has changed. Once I got rid of the burn, it changed the music. Okay, well, we'll transmit what we can. 
Okay, so we need to land there. And we've got 1,200 to make any correction. Okay, so we have a correction here, and that does a better job of getting us in line with that target. So, well, hopefully it won't move too much. My bet is that Moho doesn't rotate very quickly, so. Unfortunately, we don't have all that data for the planets that we used to in the map view, right? It used to be that the map view would offer us data about the planets, but we don't have that. Okay, then we'll go to that periapsis and bring it down into a nicer orbit. I guess we can use this stage to start the landing. Might make it easier for a little RCS lander. There it is. Flying over it. Mo hole in one. Oh, we're really skimming over the surface right now. Turn, baby, turn. <laughs> okay, so that's what it looks like. Oh, that's tough. I'm gonna be hitting the sides of it so much. It's 10 kilometers down. <laughs> okay, well, I've just condemned myself to time warp limitations for the next orbit. I don't know, how long is it gonna take to go around Moho at 4x? Seven minutes? <laughs> Well, let's take a close survey of the landscape of Moho, shall we? Well, we don't have anything to transmit. Boy, that Science Junior is hardly useful right now. Well, Moho is not quite as interesting as Paul, visually. Except, it's sure got a lot of, um... Height map. <laughs> well, we've got extra time warping. Yay! Freedom! The stage has 1 minute and 21 seconds, and it can stop us dead, basically, considering our surface velocity. Let's create a maneuver plan. That will be a hole in one. Well, something like that. I guess we should overshoot a little bit. No saving. If they say mohole in one, we're gonna try to do it in one. So there. Ignition. Okay, a uh, node please. I don't know, I think this might be more challenging than I was hoping for. Oh no! Come on, come on, come on! We've gone a little bit pear shaped here. I was told this had enough! No! No! Oh. Okay. This might be harder than I thought. Uh, that gravity was a lot more than I thought it was going to be. And we tested a 2 kN thruster with this. And it said we had a good thrust to weight ratio. But apparently we don't have a good thrust to weight ratio with 2 kN. Let's go back to KSC and check that out. It didn't seem like we were able to slow down in that gravity. So, how heavy is this? 0.38 tons. Okay, and it's 2 kilonewtons, so that's 0.2 tons of thrust. 
And what is the gravity of Moho? It says surface gravity 0.275 Gs. So in theory, we should have had, you know, double the gravity of Moho with these thrusters. Then again, I've had trouble with the RCS thrusters not working the way I expected them to. Hmm. I don't know if we would have slowed down in time, but we weren't slowing down at all, so that was the problem. Alright, so yeah. RCS, we can't use it for Lent. We can't use it, actually. <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm not entirely sure we can use it right now. In previous versions, we had been able to, so that's a little bit depressing. So we'll have to take stock of that. I'm gonna take a quick break, and then we're gonna try it again. So you will ponder this probe, but we're probably going to try it with the ant engine.